Hey, yesterday at the U.S. Conference of Mayors Winter Meeting in D.C., the U.S. softball team was on hand, kicking off the Stand Beside Her Tour. Major League Baseball is the official presenting sponsor of the training tour for the women's national softball team. They're back. Softball is back in the Olympic Games, and nobody happier about that than Kat Osterman and Haley McClinney, who join us today. Nice to see you, ladies. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thank you for it's having us. It's pretty cool that there's an actual tour, right? This has never happened before. As much success as, as you have had in this pursuit, never before has there been this tour leading up to the Olympic Games, has there? Yeah, so we had um, Aiming for Athens and okay. Bound for Beijing in 04 and was it, as big, was it as big a spectacle as this one is? Um, we didn't have the, the support of MLB the way okay. we do now, and um, I think just with the sport growing, obviously the popularity of tour is getting a little bit bigger. Well, women's softball, we were just discussing it, mm -hmm. has exploded. The scholarships, everything. I think it's one of the coolest things happening. It's the fastest growing sport out there, and you two have a lot to do with that. When did you first see it coming on? I'll ask you first, Hayden. I think when, when I was starting to come up in college, I think I didn't really realize how big the game had gotten until like my freshman year when we were packing out our stadium in Alabama and like selling out with like four or 5,000 people. Um, and just to watch it grow year after year after year, we're out rating, you know, the college baseball world series and you know, it's just continued to take off and um, you're seeing kids starting to sign up and it's really starting to grow at the grassroots level and I think that's why we're so excited to bring MLB on board is really just to continue to grow the game um, from both sides, get more kids involved, because the more kids are involved, the more fans we get, and it's just better for, for the sport overall. Yeah, I want to follow up on this. This is because it's rude to ask how old you are. So <laughs> here's the workaround question. <laughs> okay. You were a freshman. When were you a freshman? What 2013. Year? 2013. I'm okay. 25. Because so, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I'm 25. I'm not, but yeah. I'm trying to figure out, like, how old you were when Cat and the dominant teams oh, in why Beijing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Throw you for rolling. Cat's, yeah. Cat's a veteran. <laughs> I want to find out, like, did that? Did those teams influence your career and your decision to play softball? Absolutely. Cat, um, I remember watching Cat in 2008 when they were on the, uh, the Bound for Beijing tour. They stopped in Birmingham, Alabama, and I grew up um, about half an hour from Birmingham. We went and watched him, and Kat was wearing this jersey, this number. Yeah. And um, I watched her throw a bullpen. I was like, oh my God, like this girl's legit. Like, is, is it going to be possible for me to play in this one day? And um, now to be sitting here next to her with you guys and to be um, just her teammate is like, I feel like I'm living a dream every single day. So, it's Kat, awesome. I'm sure you had the, the, the choice of number. Why why you give up eight and you got 30? We were just talking about this yeah, on the way. We just talked about this on the ride over. Um, so, when I decided to obviously leave USA in 2010 after the, we had been voted out of the Olympics, um, once Haley started college, she got in the program, got to wear number eight. And then when I decided to come back, there was actually never really a discussion. I feel like if I had asked her, she probably would have given it up. Um, maybe. But maybe. <laughs> I feel like she would have because I feel like she would give you the clothes off her back like, yeah. any day of the week. But um, I, when I made the team uh, last January, they just sent me a message that said, hey, um, Haley wears number eight, you need to pick a new number. And it took me about wow. 30 seconds for me to kind of like process, do I ask I was her? Like, no, I was like, what? <laughs> do I ask her, do I not? And then I was like, you know what? I'm just new number, new new kind of era, being a little so, bit older. So I want to so take, take it, I want to take it. Tell them why you picked 38 though. Second. Well, 38 was my tryout number that January. Yeah. Um, so I want to go to that. I mean, you had to try out? Yes. What? Yeah. What in yeah. the world? Well, we all do. I mean, we all go through the same process over and over. Yeah, but we all aren't you either. Too. And they gave you number 38. Here you go. Um, try try, out yeah, my tryout number was 38. Um, number 38, you're up now. <laughs> made it. And then um, when I had to pick a new number, I asked my family. And my mom was like, well, your tryout number is kind of perfect. It's your third Olympics, and you can still be number eight in your mind. So totally works. we ran with it. And this one still calls me number eight all the time. So it's great. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I've kind of grown. It's grown on me. You it know, for perspective, bit. I think, for our viewers who might not be aware of the history of U.S. women's softball. So, yeah, Kat, and I don't want to embarrass you, but you were, you were voted the number three all-time women's all -time. softball player. Oh, wow. I didn't say, oh, you don't know the list? No. Because no. I was going to ask you, who's That's ahead legit. of you? That's legit. Lisa Fernandez? Well, I'm going to guess it's probably. Crystal Bustos? Lisa and Bustos, or Lisa and Jenny, That's it. probably. Oh, Jenny would be up yeah, there. Yeah, I don't even know if Jenny is going to be above those two. You never yeah. know. Well, Bustos and, fin, or Bustos and Lisa, and and Lisa are the, like the, the best hitters. Jenny's ridiculous. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Best but yeah. best either way you look at it, you're in the category, it sounds like you might be above Jenny. Wow. It's 
So let me ask you this question, too, wow. because, uh, and you yeah. mentioned how uh, softball was not recognized by the Olympic Committee, the International Olympic Committee, for a while, much to the chagrin of those of us here in the U.S. Was part of the problem that the international field just couldn't play with you ladies? Like, you dominated in yeah, such a sense. Them. It wasn't wasn't even fair for some of those little nations trying to get it together. Was that why? I think that played a small part. I think what people don't realize is on the Olympic year, yeah, we were prepared. In like 04, we dominated because we were prepared. But the years before that, in the, the quad, the whole quad, it's a very competitive international stage. But most of those tournaments aren't broadcast or people don't follow them as well. So I you see. see us at our premier top, and then yes, we dominated and played really well. Um, but I also think they made some rule changes and you know the mound moved back to 43 feet and you give countries only four or five years to hopefully adjust yeah 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 you know and then uh, and then it's tough where we were playing at 43 in college already so uh, for yeah. the united states it wasn't an adjustment so and, and speaking of which i talked about how it's growing so fast at the college level mm -hmm. but before that even more so i have two younger daughters and what what's amazing to me is they didn't get into into softball through little league like a lot of you probably did, they get in through softball camps early on. It's been a big change. So my question with that all said, how did you both get introduced to softball? Was it through baseball or was it through softball? Mine was through baseball. My dad was a, um, a high school baseball coach growing up, really small town in Alabama, about 2,000 people, one stoplight, one gas station, like nothing else to do but go outside and, and play sports. So uh, every day my dad would come home and he would play wiffle ball in the backyard with me and that's kind of how I got started. I asked to play when I was like three. My mom said, no, we'll wait a couple years. I signed up when I was five and for T-ball and never really looked back. And um, my brothers both play baseball as well. So we're, we're all baseball all the time. It was never really like an option. It was just something that was just a part of our life. And um, I never thought I'd be playing it at 25 years old, but here I am still still hanging around. So that's how I got involved with it. It's, it's a really family thing what for about me. You, Kat? I actually signed up and played Little League softball. So I never went the base roll route. Um, just, I was always active, wanted something to do, so my parents let me try literally every sport. Um, played softball, actually quit for a while and played soccer, um, but I was a goalie and got bored, and so went back to softball, and that's when they let me pitch, and once you let me pitch, it was all over. <laughs> What's the next stop in the tour? Wow. Where are you off to next? You were in the city all day today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Lakeland, Florida, I believe, right? Yeah, we had, outside, we had outside of Orlando early next week. Mm -hmm. um, you got, will you guys have a spring training camp and all that? We will do like a week, it's like a week of training in mm -hmm. Florida, and then we actually play, I think it's eight games while we're in Florida, mm -hmm. um, starting on February 4th. Wow. Oh. Cool thing for folks yeah. to look at on the standbesideHerTour.com website for a complete schedule. Really nice to have both of you in studio. Good luck on this tour, and certainly good luck in awesome. Tokyo. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be a fun summer watching you both play. Thank yeah. you guys. Way we're excited. Thank go you guys. Get